Hi, I'm Brenda E.M. I'm going to be tearing down one of these little ultrasonic motors. And this is going to be a quick tear down because there's not many parts. But um, you can see how small these are compared to American Quarter. Or um, also, I've got another motor here, which is a stepper motor. And uh, that's even smaller still. I tend to use these motors and cameras because they're quiet. Um, theoretically, they could be made silent, but I think these are, you can see that there's actually gears on here. So whatever they hook it up to won't be silent, even though the motor can operate on ultrasonic frequencies. Looking at the outside of the motor, we have a shaft here, a little spring, a little brass tube that goes through the motor body. We have, I believe, the stator here. And these two parts make up the rotor. And then we have a little washer and a little clip here. In between the uh, washer and the uh, rotor, we have, it looks like a little piece of maybe friction material. And these things partially work by friction. And if we take the motor and if we push on the end of the shaft, we can see that we can make this move like this. And, uh, and so it's interesting. It's a big magic trick. And uh, as you can see, that uh, nothing is magnetic in here. These don't work by magnetism. So uh, let's uh, see if we can get this little clip off here. So they get the clip off. I tried a needle, and there's not much space in here. So what I'm going to try doing is try forcing the clip off on this side, which seems to be working. If I could just make it come off a little bit, then I can get the corner of this or needle in here and just slide the clip off like so. I've got some little tweezers here. I'm sorry, I'm moving around. So we have a little, like a little clip here. Whoops. And apparently this has, still hasn't let go. So I need to push this down a little bit. And release the clip. There's a little little C clip. You get C out. This thing is tiny. And then we have a little washer here. And this whole rotor assembly seems to come off in one piece. And um, I thought that this would slip here, but it doesn't. And you can see that this uh, this surface here seems um, lathe turned, machined, a little cup like too. Now the shaft seems to want to come out, and there's got a little spring on it and a little gear, and you can see the little uh, the little slot for the clip. One of the cool thing about these motors is that this is a, a set of roller bearings here. This is the, usually the smallest set of roller bearings I've ever seen in any commercial device. And these are smaller and hard drive bearings. And uh, let's see if we can get encouragers to come out here. Maybe we could just push through with the, uh, with the, with the, um, with the scribe. One thing that's cool about um, taking apart old cameras is you get little bearings like this and you can see how small this is compared to a quarter. So these are pretty small. This particular motor, motor was from a, a Nikon camera lens and it's six millimeters by two millimeters thick. With an ID that's roughly three millimeters, it might actually be three millimeters if I got a little bore gauge in there. So, looking at the uh, rest of the motor assembly, we have um, we have the um, stator, and they call it a stator because it doesn't move. And we have a little flexible circuit board, and um, the circuit board is made out of um, captain, as in captain tape with a K. Uh, or it's a generic equivalent, and um, they use this because it takes a lot of heat. Oddly enough, this is very closely related to um, Kevlar. I believe it might even be the same chemical um, or a class of chemicals. So inside here, we've got a little brass, um, little brass uh, body in here, and I believe that's a bearing surface. And if we take the shaft here, it goes right through, and uh, with a little slop here. There's a little stop here too. And um, the spring goes here, and it applies pressure onto this onto this body here, which pulls this thing down, which pulls this little guy here down onto contacting here. Well, you may be wondering how exactly does this thing work? 
well, underneath the stator here, and let's see if we can get this off. Using a certain amount of fastener butchery, I managed to loosen up this little uh, locking uh, screw ring here. And uh, I don't have tools to do this, but uh, let's just spin this off here. We have a little threaded ring here just to hold it closed. And now we have the, the little stator. This little brass shaft comes out of the little housing. And you can see it's threaded probably about, uh, I don't know if it's three or four millimeter, but it seems like a fairly fine pitch. And what we have here is the back of the stator. And uh, looking at, of course, we have slots going all the way around its perimeter. Looking at the circuit board, it looks like um, this is attached either in the center or on the back, maybe on this piezo material. And uh, it seems that one wire goes around half almost, and the other wire goes around the other half. And um, so I'm trying to bend this because the gist of how this works is this bends a little bit, but not much. Originally, I thought this little black ring was some kind of friction material, but it's not because all three of these parts are bonded together with some kind of adhesive. And you can see those flat features here engage the shaft here. And then the little clip grabs it right here with a little spring to pull this whole assembly against the stator. Actually, this side of the stator. And interestingly, that this does not come in full contact with this. And you can see that there's a ring that has left a little mark. And it looks like it actually wears on the, uh, the kind of the center of the, the center of this uh, ring right here. Um, there's the fl big flat area here. It doesn't contact ever. And you might be able to just be able to see that there's a little edge right here. And uh, that's the piece of electric material. It's probably a crystal that's been uh, maybe water jet out or something like that. I'm not sure how they make them. There's little machine features in here. So how this works is that the electricity goes through here and it goes into the piece of electric material, causing it to deform. And this thing operates at maybe 40,000 hertz or something. It's ultrasonic and they probably don't call it ultrasonic for nothing. And I tried to get this going but with an Arduino, but it wasn't quite fast enough. Imagine that this, this stator is actually this little paper disc. And it's ultrasonic frequencies, apparently, that um, it causes a little deformation in the ring. And that deformation travels around the ring kind of in a, in a cyclic fashion. You know, it's kind of a resonance. And it builds up and builds up. And then the other part of it, sticks at times and slips on others and that's um how the motor works so another way of showing how this works and then you've seen this watch the turn you see it turn that's how this stuff works and uh when this deforms it actually does so in kind of like a wave and uh that turns this which in turn turns the shaft which is um, ha which has the bearings in it, and uh, that's how uh, a silent wave motor works or ultrasonic motor. Well, I hope you enjoyed this.